Hey everybody, we're going to do a composite together. And a composite is where you take two or more images and you put them together. And then we're gonna do some funky stuff on top of it. So first off, I just wanna show you how you can open up a image into Photo P without opening it from your computer. So for those of you that might have an image in your Google Drive, there is an easy way to do that. So over here, I've just gone into my Google Photos and I've got an image here that I'm going to use and turn into a card. If I right click on that, I can say copy the image address. Then back in Photo P, I say file open from URL. And when I do that, I can paste in now, control V, the link. I'm going to open that into a new project and say OK. And you'll see that my image is going to open. So it's a really quick way to get it in there. Now I'm also going to need a texture. So I've just Googled texture. Once again, I've gone to my tools and I've chosen that I want to have a large texture so that I have lots of pixels in it. And for my texture, I want it to be in the blue color range because of the fact that my picture has a lot of blue in it. And so I kind of like this icy one that's here, but I'm going to hit blue and I'm just going to see what comes up. And there's lots of really cool textures that are there. And so you just need to pick one of them, whichever one you decide you want to use. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to open that up into our project. I actually think that I liked this one the best of all. So I'm going to go to that one. Once again, I'm going to right click on that texture and I'm going to say copy the image address. And then over back in my photo P, I'm going to say file, open from URL. I'm going to paste right over top of my original one. And I'm going to try this time to say current project and see if it works. All right, so mine actually opened up into its own window. You can see that my texture is here, my original is there, but that's okay, it's easy to fix. Uh, I'm in my texture, I'm going to use my move tool, which is this very top one here, make sure that I'm clicked on that move tool. And now I'm just gonna grab it from here, I'm gonna drag it over and hold my mouse until it's in that other one, and then I'm gonna drop it back down into the middle here. You can see that texture is way bigger than my original picture actually is. So now I have to transform that to get it to be a little bit better in size because I want just a little bit more of the texture shape in the border. Shortcut, if you remember from last video, is Control, Alt, and your T key at the same time. And I'm gonna have to zoom out because it's really big as you can see. And so zooming out, I held down Alt and used my scroll wheel on my mouse just like before, or you can use your zoom tool, your control plus, control minus also works in Photo P. So I'm going to hold down my shift key, drag from a corner, get it so that it is a lot smaller, and put it around my image. That looks pretty good right there. And I'm going to zoom back out so I can see a lot more of what I'm doing. Now these are in the wrong order. My background is on top of my photo. So instead what I want to do is I want to switch the order of those. You can grab your background. So I'm right here. I'm going to grab it and I'm going to put it down below my other one so that my picture is actually on top. On my picture layer itself, I need to just make this a teeny bit smaller so that you can actually see my border around it. So I'm again going to do a control out T. I'm going to use shift, right, a corner. And I'm going to also use alt at the same time. And notice that when I do shift and alt, it brings it in on all four directions. So shift and alt and I'm going to have it so that there's a little bit of border around my image. Okay, so now I'm going to show you something called masking. And masking is when we can take part of a layer and we can hide it. And so generally what we do is we don't want to use an eraser tool. 
An eraser tool is a permanent destruction. And if you make a mistake with an eraser tool and you erase something, it's gone. You can't get it back later. So instead we use a, uh, a tool called masking. And so what I want you to do here is make sure that you're sitting on your photo layer, okay? And this little button right here is the mask button, okay? So by sitting on that photo layer, I'm gonna hit that mask button. You'll see what it does is it creates this extra little white layer around it. Now there's a little rhyme and the rhyme is this. Black conceals, white reveals. Black conceals or hides something. White reveals or lets you see something. So on this layer right now, my mask is white, so it's revealing all of the picture. I can use the opposite color, which is black, and I can start hiding different pieces of the picture itself. So really, really important. You need to make sure that the selection is around the mask and not around the picture itself. If the mask is white, I'm going to paint with black. So make sure that your color over here is set to black. If not, click it, set your color to black. We're gonna go get a brush. So use your brush tool. And when you go to use this brush tool, we're gonna to go get a grungy brush. Now, unfortunately, there are not very many brushes that are built into Photopea. At school, I've got hundreds of them. But we're stuck with this, you guys, so we're gonna make the best of it. Here we have some brushes, and down kind of near the bottom of the list, this is the grungy, it's called a round, noisy marker. So it's kind of the closest brush that we've got. And when you use this one, you want your brush to be, oh, fairly large, I guess, so about like that. And what I'm gonna start to do is I'm gonna paint with black now over top of my picture. And I'm just gonna make it kind of rough on my edges. And so you can come in and you can come out. Now I'll show you something here. If I go to this brush palette, you also can change the angle on it so that every time you click, it kind of changes the angle a little bit. So I'm gonna change the angle and I'm gonna change the roundness a little bit of it. And watch what happens now is every time I click, I get a slight different brush, at least I should. Looks pretty much the same to me. You go ahead and brush around your picture and I'm gonna finish doing mine.